If I could tell you a way to control the outcome of your next project, would you want to hear it? Whatever your answer, I'm about to tell you about a field of applied mathematics called control theory. It's used by engineers to try and understand complex systems and solve problems within those systems. But before we go any further, it might behoove you to think of a particular project and your answer to my question. This video is already kind of spooky. I like it. The example I'm thinking of, not very spooky, my book club. It's a system that I've been running for almost three years now, and maybe it's time to start thinking about what I put into it and what I get out of it. There may be several reasons why one would want to control the outcome of a particular system or project. The first one is you don't fuck with uncertainty. Now this is fine, but I highly recommend you learn how to cope because shit is not getting any more certain. That's about the only thing I'm certain of. And even that, maybe it will. I don't know. I don't know. But if you want to learn how to deal with uncertainty, I recommend subscribing to my Substack. Sorry for the plug, but I am working on a book that hopefully deals with some of these concepts. In any event, humans don't love uncertainty, and so they seek to exert control over things. Another reason, which I consider to be perfectly valid, would be that you're in an unstable system. But when I think about stability in human systems, I think about family structures, abusive ones. You may want to try and gain some stability in an unstable family situation. Along the same lines, you may want to learn how to deal with disturbances. And you may want to set some project up so disturbances like this don't fuck up what you're doing. The final reason you may want to think about control theory is for efficiency purposes. I don't like to think of my life in terms of its efficiency, but let's be honest, I do a lot of shit, I have a lot of projects, and I want to get the most out of them. Ultimately, I want to enjoy what I'm doing without languishing over trivialities or over-optimizing myself to death. Am I over-optimizing myself to death? Anyways, the first thing you want to do is think about your system, the inputs, what you're putting into it, and what you expect to be the outputs. Now, this may seem simple, but it's relatively new as a field. What kind of dorks actually came up with this stuff? The, the dorkiest kind, of course. I'm talking about one of the most amazing physicists to ever live, James Clerk Maxwell, and then Norbert Wiener. Yeah, Wiener, I know. Anyways, Maxwell discovered a whole bunch of shit, like how to get color photographs and what the rings of Saturn are made of, and basically electromagnetism. But in his spare time, he came up with some equations that were the beginnings of control theory. In 1868, he contributed this piece on governors, sorry, on governors from the proceedings of the Royal Society. So the deal with this was steam engines that moved shit all over the place basically had no control. They just go. So James Watt invented something called a centrifugal governor that would basically govern how much steam went into the engine, basically how much power it got. Fucking brilliant, right? So anyways, old Maxwell wrote some equations to describe that, and control theory was born. Almost 100 years go by, and Norbert Wiener introduces the theory of cybernetics, which is derived from the Greek word Kubernetes. If you're in tech, you know what I'm talking about. Kubernetes in Greek means steersman, like the motherfucker who drives the ship. Do you feel what I'm saying now? So after World War II, Norbert Wiener is over here talking about the human use of human beings. Not sketch at all. Basically, he's talking about how cybernetics will affect society. And boy, has it. Cybernetics is a huge field that's concerned with the idea of circular causal systems. Feedback. That's what this whole video is about. The whole video is about feedback. So anyways, I would love feedback on the video if you'd like to leave a comment. It may help me to optimize my process for the human use of human beings. So the idea of cybernetics has existed for a long time. Wiener just put it into a theory. And that theory has penetrated almost every field you can think of in modern academic study. I was trained as a neuroendocrinologist. Talk about feedback loops, okay? The whole endocrine system is just a giant set of feedback loops. But this can be seen in almost every biological system, social systems, engineering, complex adaptive systems. My book club would be one such system, but you could apply this to just about anything that has a network of interactions, individual and or collective actions that can change the system and allow self-organization. Basically, it's a, the whole fucking thing. Some other examples I was thinking about using for this video were the process of getting my nails done. That could be a complex adaptive system. I was also thinking about my job as a medical science liaison, but you could apply this easily to say the music industry, creating YouTube videos, the publishing industry, 
you could take any aspect of those things and make it into a complex adaptive system to study. But the question is, do you want to? I mean, obviously you want to, you're still here. So if you want to, put your system in a block. This is called a block diagram. So here we have Berkler. I just want to say Berkler. I love Berk. I love Berk. I love Berkler. Oh my god. That's like the best meme of all time. So let's just start with simple inputs. What am I putting into Berkler? Well, the book and like my vibes. <laughs> Easy. And what do I expect to get out of it? Well, to be honest, when I started this, I just wanted people to talk to about shit like this. I should have started a YouTube channel. YouTube was inevitable. Anyways, the reason I started this was because I wanted to recreate my grad school journal club experience. Seriously, dude, do we get beer? Yeah. Do we have beer? Is there a journal club? Yes, if you haven't realized, I'm totally a nerd. I had a blast in journal club. There were several components involved, several inputs, if you will. There was the paper, and then there was the people. The format never varied. There were two students in particular, we called them the power twins. Well, maybe, maybe I just called them the power twins. They were, I'm just going to say it. They were the fucking smartest. They were the smartest. And I loved when they were at journal club, except when we picked a paper that they knew really well, we'd all end up in some crazy esoteric vortex that only the two of them really knew anything about. So when I picked a paper, you know, I chose something weird like GMOs or alternative medicine, something that no one knew anything about. It was always off the wall. Proud of that. So basically what I wanted out of this book club was to have a fucking good time talking about weird stuff, intellectual stuff, sciencey, philosophical stuff. So what's the problem? Why am I even making this video if I got what I wanted? Well, you see, I got so much out of this that I don't quite know what to do with myself. You know the idea, mo money, mo problems? Yeah, that's this. So if you think for one second that when your next project is successful, then you'll feel satisfied, you won't. That's why you have to satisfice. See my previous video. Sometimes you'll be satisfied and you'll just keep doing the same thing over and over and over. A thing can just keep going in perpetuity. This is something called an open system. A system just feeds forward. It just keeps going. Basically it runs until it breaks, but that's not the way biological or social systems usually work. There's always some kind of feedback. Book gang would discuss not only the book, but also the other attendees, the format, how things were going, whether we should change the date, yada, yada, yada. And all of that, of course, came back to me, the controller. I control her, control her. So a control system can be broken down into two basic components. A controller. You like it when I get aggressive and the processes that that controller controls the controller takes in all of the feedback and adjusts the processes accordingly go slow go faster so we're just chugging along having a good old time i mean it's just a gas and i get some feedback that perhaps we have a set of power twins in our midst <laughs> so what happened in our case is we broke off into our own thing why not make a podcast and so syllogism was born it's called <laughs> um, so syllogism ended up being its own whole system that I was enjoying very much, but it's kind of intense reading a whole book every two weeks, almost as grueling as making a video essay every single week for 26 weeks. But alas, I was having so much fun. I thought, why don't I try and do a solo podcast as well? And so Neo Academia was born. At this point, I'm out of fucking control. I mean, the shit's just going feed forward. I don't even have time to take in feedback. It's kind of what my brain looked like at that period. <laughs> Let's be honest, it's kind of what my brain always looked like. But that's because I have a tendency not to want to put controls on the output of many projects in my life. But think about it. If you said, no, I don't want control over my next project, well, <laughs> this could be you. On the other hand, if you do want control, one way to get control of a system is to try and reduce the number of variables in it. Basically, do less. I was talking to a friend today on TikTok about whether I should introduce a mathematical concept called a Laplace transformation. A Laplace transform is a specific way of removing a variable from a system you want to study. It helps to simplify things. I'm not going to go much deeper into that concept, but suffice it to say, simplifying is a good idea if you want more control over the output of your system. So after three years of doing ratchet book club things with my friends, I think maybe it's time to rein it in a little bit. Go slow. So I'm going to go back to basics. I'm going to look at what I'm actually putting into the system. Yes, books and vibes, but it's much more than that. And then I'm going to look at what I want out of the system for real, for real. 
and what I'm actually getting out of the system. I think this is a really useful thing to do because when you look at what you're actually getting out of the system or what you're not getting out of the system, it kind of informs what you expect. Like I didn't say anything about wanting a financial reward for doing this, but I did put it in the things that I'm not getting out of it. So that kind of indicates that I expected it a little bit. So I have to change my expected outcomes because like it or not, that is something that I expect. Now it's entirely possible that that may compete with one or more other desired outputs from the system. So I isolated this further and thought about one specific thing that I want out of this particular system. Let's just say I want more people to come to book club. That's an easy metric to track. And I looked at all of the feedback surrounding that particular thing. So I decided to look at the time, format, and platform I was using to hold book club. And I varied those things accordingly. I switched from Saturday at six to Saturday at four, at eight. I think we even tried a Friday and a Thursday in there. I tried moving from Zoom to the Discord. I tried structuring the discussion. I tried leaving room for free time and no structure, making notes beforehand and questions I wanted to ask. None of this really seemed to make a big difference on this component of the system. So in control theory, there are two main reasons why an input might not be having an effect on the output. The first is that the wrong fucking changed the input. You're doing it wrong. And I think that's what I was doing. Or two, maybe you haven't given it enough time. Changes to input can be immediate, but that doesn't mean that changes in output will follow. Think about a car. If you put the pedal to the metal, you've immediately changed that input, but it takes a while for the car to ramp up. I gave each one of these variations several months, so I don't think it was the time component. So I stopped for a while to reevaluate my inputs. Didn't take me long to get bored and start reading another book. I started reading The Structure of Scientific Revolutions in January of this year, and it was pretty fucking dry. And also, I was thinking I needed to optimize my free time. I was reading. I should probably be doing something else at the same time, right? So I decided to record it, and maybe I would use it for my YouTube channel. Don't advise this if you want to monetize your YouTube channel, by the way. But I thought, while I'm at it, why don't I live stream my reading of the book on TikTok? I didn't expect anybody to attend, and for a while it was like one person in there. Shout out to J Rocks. And then over time, well, shit, it's grown now. On any given day, you could see five to 20 people in there listening to me read some esoteric philosophy book at 11 a.m. Central. I've also kept it open in my Discord, so anyone who's been in the Discord can attend those readings as well. And I'm having a really fucking good time. But am I satisfied? Hell no. Of course I'm not. When I get everything I want, I want more. <laughs> Now my bitch ass thinks that I should be getting paid to do this. Is it just me? Cause this shit's so good, I shouldn't have to fall for free. So when I tucked in to write this video essay, I thought, let me figure out how I can optimize this. How can I get paid to do this? How can I squeeze every last drop of value out of Berkler? Yeah. And honestly, if I were a tiny bit smarter, I would write a differential equation to figure this shit out. And if I were more disciplined, once I'd written it out, I would actually follow through with it. And if I were a bit less interested in watching how the natural chaos of the system plays out, I would become rich off of it. <laughs> now, the benefits of doing said things are obvious. Get rich, do the shit you want to do, have total control of your life. <laughs> like having a personal genie. I mean, even without the differential equations, you might really be able to make some solid improvements in your situation by applying simple feedback rules. But the drawbacks of employing said feedback rules are a little bit less obvious. Kind of spooky. I like it. I mean, the most obvious drawback is turning your life into a differential equation. <laughs> like that sounds like hell. I mean, control theory is largely mathematics. And in order to properly understand a system, you would need to break everything down into individual variables and components and do some motherfucking math. And then you might realize that complex nonlinear systems are very difficult to control for. And you might try to oversimplify your life. Focus on like one or two things, which is cool. But like, I got a kid, I got dogs, I got a little ass farm out here. I don't know if I really want to do that. Not only that, but control theorists, when they're looking to learn this shit, they don't start with fun projects like Berkler. The example that taught me about the two ways that an input might not match an output was using an elevator. Like, cool, I guess, but like, ugh, boring. So not only is it boring and gross to try to optimize your life, it might be impossible and <laughs> shit, maybe you're just too chill for all that. I mean, but honestly, what are you going to optimize your way out of death? My objective with Blueprint is to demonstrate aging escape velocity using 
the best science trying to do all the appropriate interventions to neutralize my aging process. Escape velocity. Bro, my life is not a rocket. I mean, I don't like thinking about death any more than the next person. Although I do want a Viking funeral and make it fun. Lots of laughing, please, and definitely get way too intellectual about shit. But I'd probably rather think about my funeral than like ways to optimize myself out of death. That's like super creepy. If you're at all into sci-fi, you know this shit never turns out well. Nobody's like, gee, I'm so glad I lived to be a thousand. Or wow, I'm so glad I got reincarnated 12 times into these sleeves. It's just fucking wonderful. I love it. I'd rather think about death than kid myself into thinking I have more than a snowball's chance in hell at escaping it. You know, come to think of it, there is a certain philosopher who agrees with me. This philosopher said, if I take death into my own life, acknowledge it and face it squarely, I will free myself from the anxiety of death and the pettiness of life. Only then will I be free to become myself. Shit does seem kind of petty now that I'm thinking about it. In all seriousness, this particular philosopher is not highly regarded in most circles. I heard Martin Heidegger may or may not have been associated with a certain mustache dictator who did absolutely horrendous things. And when I looked into it, yeah, yeah, he was a Nazi. Definitely a Nazi. But you know what's funny is his post-war philosophy really seemed to explain the major problem with Nazism. I mean, major outside of the fact that it was just awful. But like, they were really trying to over-optimize things. Not that I think their plan would have worked at all, but think about it. If God came down from heaven and told you, I know the way to make the world the best possible world, like, would you do that? No! Like, fuck that! If that's optimization, count me out. Heidegger talks about the essence of modern technology as something called gestell, which basically means in framing or a framework. Not unlike the frameworks I am presenting to you here. Ugh. Ugh. Ultimately, he thinks technology is not just a tool, but like a way of living. Technology helps us enframe our circumstances and challenges us to bring about the most optimal outcome. <laughs> Fuck. Rest in peace, Heidegger. You would have loved where control theory is headed. He thought it was alienating and ultimately unethical. Now, ooh, uh... I don't know necessarily that I would take advice on ethics from Heidegger, but like he's kind of spitting. Maybe he did notice that the Nazis were obsessed with over-optimization. I mean, like he was a Nazi, but that doesn't mean that he did not see what was going on. Oh, fuck. That was bad. <laughs> Sorry. So at this point, it's getting late. My phone is dying. I skipped the gym and I did not cook dinner for my family. All for the sake of trying to optimize some kind of ending for this video. So what should you do? I don't know. Do what I do and optimize till your heart's content. And like Drake says, the moment I stop having fun with it, I'll be done with it. That's probably terrible advice. <laughs> Anyways, you could just join my book club and we could talk about this shit ad infinitum. But honestly, I can't entirely control where my book club is going to go, where this video is going to go. And I don't really know that I want to. I'm just out here trying to live, child. One thing Heidegger did lift from the poet Holderlin is the idea that where the danger is grows the saving power also. So like maybe a little bit of optimizing? I don't know. But don't overdo it because maybe the worst outcome is that you get exactly what you expected. <laughs> With that, I'll encourage you to subscribe for more cliffhanging content on complexity and creativity. Check out my Substack for all kinds of stuff, including worksheets on how to optimally not over-optimize your life. And maybe leave a comment voting on what you'd like the next video to be. You have approximately one day before I start writing it. It'll either be on differential equations, dissipative structures, or determinism. See y'all later.